Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us wherever you are joining us from, wherever you are in the world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Global Innovation Design Preview for the RCA Show 2021. I'm really pleased to welcome you today. Uh, I've just been looking through the list of attendees. It's fantastic to see some familiar names on there. So welcome old friends and part of the GID family who are reconnecting. And welcome to those of you who are who are joining to find out more about the programme, to find out more about perhaps the work um, of our graduating students. Perhaps you know them or perhaps you'd like to know more about uh, the course. Um, I really hope that today will be just uh, spark your curiosity and you'll stay with us later in the day for um, more of a, an exchange where you, we'll have some time later when you can actually chat face to face with the guys who are with us today. So um, just to set the scene, I'm John Stevens. I'm acting head of program for GID on the RCA side of the program. You might know it's jointly run with Imperial College. Um, GID is known as the course where students get to go on international placements in the States and in Asia, but of course uh, not in 2020. But the multidisciplinarity of the program with this global perspective is, is built into the program and um, including this international alliance with our, with our four world leading institutions. Um, but uh, like, like all the other graduating students this year, our cohort um, had to face the disappointment of re remote learning and, and get to grips with the challenges of that. And of course, especially for GID, the disappointment not being able to experience the places and cultures that they'd hoped to as part of the programme. Still, uh, we're immensely impressed and proud of the work that the guys have come up with. And I, I'm sure you'll agree when you get to see the work, it's a, it's a rich, deep exploration of a range of fascinating design projects and problems. Let me tell you a little bit about that. Um, we'll we'll he hear them speak for themselves in a moment, but I just want to say, uh, um, as acting head of programme for these two years, I am immensely proud to introduce their work. We have 21 graduating students this year, and I'm really happy to say we've got 15 of them joining today. And as I said, you'll be able to talk to them directly later on. They're celebrating the end of a uniquely challenging journey, which has really challenged their resilience, their strength and commitment. And they've had to come up with new ways of working, um, not just connecting with uh, the academy, but with, them, with one another, working across great distance, and um, they've, they've really come through on this. I'm really, as I said, immensely proud of that. So the work, uh, the work they present here aims to deliver social, environmental, economic and cultural impact, as GID always does. Um, and um, I think you'll agree, we we'll see that they've pushed through the established design disciplines, many beyond their original undergraduate subjects or their professional experience, crossing over and uh, between disciplines and subject areas. The guys will be speaking in four, uh, four groups today. We'll, we'll be first, uh, David's going to introduce in a bit more detail his project and Jing Yi's, Maraid, Harrison and Grishma. They'll all be talking uh, around their projects grouped into this subject of inclusion. Uh, they're presenting solutions that focus on quality of life issues really important quality of life issues based on age or physical and sensory abilities and gender. Then Zeke will, will talk us through the ethics group, Zeke and Christian, um, looking at, of course, the, the, um, the fact that the growing scope of design and design is beyond products and communication through services and systems and policy. And it, that means that there's increased attention to ethical practice and a kind of growing understanding of the responsibility of design and individual designers, whether that's around uh, data and the way we use data and the way we engage with data or around uh, more broadly how designers actually can bring ethics into the practice themselves. So we'll hear from Zeke shortly. And then we'll be hearing about uh, the experience group. And of course, in some ways, all design is about experience. Uh, but these guys particularly have explored how um, new products, systems and services are perceived and felt by their users 
right uh, um, is uh, absolutely squarely within the remit of their projects. So uh, that will be you'll be hearing from uh, Harika, Nick, Millie, and Man. And then lastly, sustainability. Dan's going to introduce, uh, the, of course, this this massive issue. Um, of, of crucial importance. Dan will introduce it far, far better than I can. And, but of course, we know the urgency and importance of the planetary challenges. The guys have explored issues around uh, food futures, fashion, air quality, and water scarcity. So uh, I, that's all I want to say for now. I'll, I'll uh, join again at the end, and I'll tell you a little bit about some more events coming up and how to get over to the gather space, which is our virtual gallery space. Um, it's, it's a really fun environment. You can, you can wander around and, and meet the guys and see the work. So we'll all head over there. Um, but for next, I'd like to hand over to David. David, are you there? I am. <laughs> That's Thanks. a relief. Great to yeah. see you, David. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction, John. Um, very happy to introduce the first group of students, which includes Jingyi, Mairead, Harrison, Grishma and myself. And for the five of us, the last six months have been about using design to address various challenges of inclusion that we care very deeply about. So all of our projects were very people focused and involved collaboration with a very wide range of users um, to figure out how we can meet their needs. Whether it's assistive furniture that allows older people to live independently, new systems that empower visually impaired people to enjoy tabletop games or to enter text through speech and gestures, and experiential design installation for trans inclusivity, as well as a platform that promotes well being for people transitioning into retirement. That being said, I'll let everyone introduce their projects. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jingyi Li. I am an inclusive interaction designer. Today I'll be introducing my work, Moception, that helps visually impaired users to deal with text efficiently. A main challenge that visually impaired users face when they're interacting with digital systems is text entry and editing, which can be very slow and laborious without visual feedback. Many mainstream solutions based on touch require both hands to operate making it really difficult to use for visually impaired users with a cane in one hand. Moception aims at tackling these challenges. Over the past six months, I had the pleasure of working closely with a group of visually impaired users at Guangzhou Tree of Life Disability Innovation Center to explore the design space with a broad range of alternatives, tapping into a spatial intelligence of human beings, making use of different interaction modalities and metaphors. After three rounds of iteration, testing, software, and hardware development, Moception presents a single-handed ice-free text entry and editing method, leveraging proprioception and low-key 3D gestures. This is what visually impaired users can do with Moception. Users can start speech-to-text input by making a fist. If users want to review all the text content inputted, they can draw a square with their index finger or draw a horizontal line to review the text content line by line. When users spot a mistake and need to locate the insertion point after the wrong text, they can rotate a wrist clockwise to go through each word and locate it. To correct the wrong text, users can simply make a pinch and say, replace dinner with lunch and release the pinch. Text correction can be done within a second. The working prototype of Moception has significantly cut down the completion time by 53.2%. Moception was proved to be um, an elegant solution for visually impaired users and potentially for elderly users or just every one of us in encumbered situations. Hello, my name is Mairead and this is my major project Beyond the Binary. Beyond the Binary is an experiential design installation for trans inclusivity. Throughout the project, my aim was clear that whatever I made needed to learn to unlearn the gender binary in order to transform perspectives for a more gender inclusive world. Two in five trans people in the UK have experienced a hate crime in the last 12 months, a culture of microaggressions which are exclusive behaviours contribute towards this. 
For the last six months, I was able to work collaboratively with a trans support network called Trans by South End. Um, I carried out different interviews, focus groups and workshops to understand the microaggressions that this community faces every day. And something that really stuck out to me, uh, uh, something from my participants that said, if only people knew how it felt to be trans, I think they would empathize more. So whatever I decided to design had to do this. So I created the installation, which encompasses three main parts um, and three main interactions. The first being the refracting mirror. This addresses the theme of character and the microaggression of being stared at. It asks you to think about your own gender whilst um, mimicking the feeling of being stared at. Secondly is the impossible puzzle, where the user interacts with the, um, the impossible puzzle and feels frustrated. This uh, relates to the microaggression of underrepresentation for the trans community. And the third one is the pitch changer. The user speaks into the interaction and the interaction plays back their, their speech at a different pitch. This relates to the theme of gender dysphoria, which came up in all of my interviews with trans individuals. And lastly, the user contextualizes all of these abstract emotions from the interactions through trans stories um, in an interactive book. They understand what the installation was about and how their perspective might be changed for the future. Um, overall, my, my design reconceptualizes how we look at trans inclusivity and aims to create greater empathy towards um, the trans community. Thank you. Hello, the story of my project Holodeck begins with making tabletop games more inclusive and winds up revealing how that could benefit us all. For the blind and visually impaired, tabletop games are rarely, if ever, accessible out of the box, and blind enthusiasts shoulder the burden of physically modifying games to make them accessible by umbrella embossings, stickers, and NFC tags, or by using unwieldy apps that offer imperfect text-to-speech. And this burden becomes even more apparent when it comes to playtesting tabletop games still in development. Playtesting has been popularized with the rise of crowdfunding platforms, building a bridge between creators and players. Print and play kits distributed via the internet let creative designers invite curious players into the design process itself. But unfortunately, this kind of community playtesting effectively excludes all but the most enthusiastic of blind players. Holodeck makes it possible for creators to go beyond the status quo of print and play kits, and it does this by making it simple to virtualize their game assets, creating a digital twin that incorporates textual, pictorial, and positional information. This empowers and encourages creators to distribute games that are accessible right out of the virtual box. For the late blind and the growing proportion that do not read braille fluently, screen reading has become the most favored interaction and in hearing the most accessible sensory modality. Cards in Holodeck become consistent gestural soundboards made accessible through virtual augmentation rather than tedious physical modification. Holodeck transforms each player's smartphones into their hand of cards and a larger screen such as a tablet becomes a communal table. Playing across multiple devices gives the virtual yet in-person gaming platform some of the physicality at the heart of tabletop games. And by moving into cyber physicality, Holodeck opens the door to new dimensions of immersion and interactivity, blurring the line between our notions of traditional tabletop games and modern video games. Cards will come alive, walk across the table, and maybe even find that they have something to say. Hi everyone, I'm Grishma and I'm an industrial designer. Throughout my GID journey, I've used empathic and user-centered research methods to create emotionally durable design. For my final project, I worked on Upraise, which is an elegant seat assist that allows users with impaired mobility to stand up easily. The initial inspiration of this project was my grandmother. I noticed that she struggled to stand up from a chair regularly. It would take her four to five attempts before standing up, and she refused to ask for help as she did not want to be dependent on someone. When I talked to more individuals, I realized that this was a common concern amongst the aging population. Not only did they avoid asking for help uh, to stand up, but they also avoided functional looking objects that would make their homes feel like hospitals. Further dive into this uh, space highlighted that design for disability currently only focuses on problem solving and lacks playful interactions. The results end up, ends up being very functional and these objects become very stigmatized. In order to avoid um, stigmatized designs, I chose to co-create the object with the users. I first prototyped uh, scale models to communicate my ideas remotely. And uh, when I got to travel home during the Easter break in India, I worked with local artisans, craftsmen, and engineers to create a functional prototype. 
I then took this functional prototype to my grandmother to get more feedback to refine the idea further in terms of comfort and usability. The main focus of the design was that it should be comfortable for the users to use. It should look beautiful so that it makes them feel confident to use it. And it should functionally serve the purpose of assisting them to stand up. That being said, the final outcome in involved extendable backrest that will allow the users to sit comfortably for prolonged periods of time. And the seat would rise at a certain angle so that the users can stand up easily when they press the handle. That is our praise. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out on any of these social media platforms. Thank you. Hi, my name is David, and my work in the show this year is all about designing for well-being and more meaningful human connection. For example, you'll find my project called Next, which looked into retirement, a major and often disruptive life transition. And I asked the question of how people might rediscover their purpose after leaving work. I've worked with 11 retirees over the last six months, and the outcome is a platform that makes it very easy for people to start community projects that they're really passionate about or get involved in projects um, that they would like to support. It's essentially about connecting those people who see retirement as an opportunity to start something new that's impactful for community and society and those who want to continue using and developing their skills. The interface makes it really easy um, to browse projects. The organizers introduce what their, what their project is about. And, and if you're looking to join, you get all the information right inside the app and you can reach out to a real human rather than emailing a generic email address. The whole platform is also hyper local. So it's an opportunity for you to make new friends and, and um, expand your social network right where you live. Another project you'll find is called the Joy app and it's a digital ecosystem I've built which connects healthcare providers to community services and it makes it a lot easier for clients to get referred into support services that they really need. Um, and the system overall produces a lot of data on well-being and health outcomes. So happy to have a chat about this in more detail if you're interested. Um, it's already being used in organisations across the UK, for example, in the NHS and, and local authorities and charities. That's not all of my work, of course. So if you head over to my page, you'll find some more projects on community building, ritual design and loneliness. Hello, I am Harika, and I will be introducing the theme of experience design and GID, um, which includes projects done by myself, Millie, Nan, and Nick. And this past year, if anything, has shown us that we need to re-examine the future of um, human experiences as we explore new ways to engage with technology and still stay connected to our bodies, each other, and our environments. Um, our work looks into the way we can monitor our bodies for better health, balance our engagement with social media and explore cities in mixed reality, or even produce artifacts that allow us to journey beyond Earth. We hope you enjoy this glimpse into our process and our final creations. Thank you. Hello, my name is Nick, and today I'm going to be introducing my project, Zero Day Cutlery. It's a series of food-related artifacts that explore new ways of designing the products that shape astronauts' life in space. Throughout my project, I had the opportunity to engage and work with designers and engineers from NASA, SpaceX, and MIT Media Labs. And the key stakeholder insight that inspired this project was that hardcore engineering is necessary and it has to be done, but not at the expense of ignoring the human part of it. Now, in the current process, humans are being retrofitted into the machine through rigorous training which creates an acceptable living condition for short duration flights. But in longer space flights, higher level needs such as enjoying a meal become much more significant to the success of the mission. So I use the eating experience as a principal tool to develop a series of products that explore how human centered design can be used to address those needs. The first product that I created is a spoon with a flexible structure that gives astronauts more control during their meals. 
This could potentially allow for a broader range of food textures as it does not only rely on the water surface tension. The second product is a redesign of the existing food packaging. With the addition of an intuitive auto seal mechanism, it provides astronauts the confidence to open multiple packets and create a more enjoyable meal. And the last product is a speculative design of the drinking container. It uses genetic modification to turn plant roots grown on board into flavoring agents for drinks. This enables astronauts to produce their preferred beverage while minimizing the weight load. Finally, the methodology behind these products provides a first understanding on how to use human-centered design to address astronauts' higher level needs while still respecting the engineering requirements. Thank you. Hi, I'm Melissa. I'm a designer who's interested in the nuances in human connections and communications within a physical or digital space. I'm showcasing my product timely, a digital shepherd that lives in the user's smartphone that manages and balances meaning and engagement time for social media use. In 2018, Facebook announced a change in their newsfeed algorithm that prioritizes meaningful content, such as posts from the user's friends or family members over engagement-based contents. However, the problem here is that this still measures success based on the engagement metric, put through the number of reactions or likes or comments or shares, with the goal to maximize engagements and usage time from their users. This led to the project's goal, which is to design a digital intervention in the use of smartphone that maximizes meaningful social media experiences while minimizing any mindless engagement time while optimizing their usage, ultimately allow users to regain their time. And as a result, Timely was conceived. Timely is an algorithm that exists within the user's phone operating system. And based on the user's phone usage, Timely can predict the user's next phone usage and create a personalized meaningful feed by pulling contents from the user's um, social media accounts, which can then be de delivered to the users in a timely manner. And by placing the timely algorithm in the standalone timely native applications in the user's phone, it allows users to interact with the meaningful feed within the set timely limit, as well as allowing users to configure the feed, which can help inform the algorithm over time and changing the timely limits as well as privacy preferences for timely to access the user's social media accounts. All in all, Timely is a starting point towards addressing the bigger picture of undermining surveillance capitalism by managing and balancing users' meaningful and social media experiences and engagement time, and to minimize the time users engage in social media mindlessly and ultimately allow users to regain their time. I'm Millicent, and if you're interested in my projects, please feel free to get in touch. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mantra Chan. I'm a designer interested in challenging our perception and seeking for behavior change. My showcase here, Melody, is an enjoyable solution to control a diet by pairing music with food through a music algorithm and smart devices. Lifestyle diseases such as diabetes and obesity are on the rise every year. One of the main causes is from unhealthy food we eat. Whenever we try to control unhealthy food, our body responds to make it care them more and ends up overeating. Based on multisensory research, shown that slow tempo of music could trigger people to eat more slowly, taste the flavor more, and consume less. Melody is a novel application presenting a full complementary intervention of a real-time music algorithm and app to create your music profile, a sensing ring, an audio speaker. So how does this actually work? You start by creating your musical profile on this Melody app based on your personal music preferences. For example, for your lunchtime, you have fatty fish and chips. Sensing Ring will detect and display nutritional elements from your food, helping you make better eating decisions. Then Melody will compose a soundtrack with a slow tempo with ambiances related to your food. So you'll get a soothing beat jazz from Brighton that perfectly matches with your seafood. So you eat more slowly and ultimately consume less. By integrating musical stimulus into a connected system of smart devices, 
This could help everyone have a healthier eating lifestyle and change our perception of food with more mindfulness. Melody, music changing the way we eat. Hi, my name is Harika and this is my project encounter. Today, there are many problems with our attention and relationship with technology and handheld devices. Encounter is a design for mixed reality using a non-intrusive approach. It's an AI-driven augmented reality experience that enables people to find serendipitous moments in their city and geotag audio memories. Insights from participants show that bucket lists and searching in a physical location can be disorganized and waste precious time. Unexpected discoveries happen through social media and local knowledge instead. This informed the three recommendation bubbles of encounter. The bubbles provide guided or serendipitous encounters like the perfect sunset view. An encounters hearable device uses bone conduction and flexible electronics to stick behind the ear and connect you to a voice assistant for conversational feedback at any point on your journey. When an encounter is detected in a location, a bubble will light up with haptic feedback on your wrist. And if you ask for more information, this will push quick audiovisual media. Encounter also lets you record and share geotagged audio memories, transforming your city with a rich layer of lived experience from loved ones. Say you discover a geotagged audio of your grandparents painting spot, and this prompts you to visit an art shop recommended by Encounter. You can use spatial audio navigation to go back to the same painting spot. Each part of the ecosystem and experience was informed by state-of-the-art research and technology and guided by industry validation from experts and leading companies. And it was developed through an iterative design process in visual design, wearable tech design, and voice interface design. Encounter is a mixed reality experience that allows humans to be present and augments their environment in a way that feels like an extension of the human. Thank you. Hello everyone, so I am Zeke and I'm here to introduce you to our next theme on ethics. So the next couple of projects explores the intersection of ethics, technology and design. Now, just last month, at a talk about the future of design education in our school, Don Norman mentioned ethics as being critically important in a topic that is currently not taught in many design schools in the world. As an emerging lens to help navigate in this ever-growing complex world, the next few projects showcase here six to address this, from empowering you by giving direct control of the ads you see online with Project Ego by Christian Puxley, to my project entitled Design Ethicate, a community-driven evaluation tool, all of which seeks to facilitate an ethical outcome. So now let's take a closer look at the works on display. Hi, my name is Christian Pugsley, and before I dive into my final project, Ego, I needed to start with the simple fact that no one likes ads. They don't. But ads do help us discover new products and services that improve our daily lives. And Ego is a platform that gives you direct control over those ads. But for a bit of context, each time you go online, you indirectly tell advertisers a bit more about yourself, the other things you like, the things you click, the things you search for. And those actions are interpreted by advertisers as interest groups, which they use to then feed you ads. But for those who haven't seen what these groups look like, uh, I thought I'd share a subject of my favorite Facebook ad interest groups, um, some of which make sense, some of which don't make any sense whatsoever. Uh, and Ego simply displays these groups to you as they're added to your account in real time, and then gives you the choice to approve groups that you find interesting or groups that make sense, uh, or remove the groups that don't by simply saying, no, this group doesn't apply to me. But Ego additionally gives you the choice to customize these interest groups using the push function to set your own ad schedule, saying where you want to see groups, when you want to see them, or how long, and why. Then Ego automates those choices and informs advertisers on your behalf, pushing those ads to and from your device. The decisions you make with Ego can affect your social media, 
your search results, your online shopping, video or music streaming, essentially anywhere you see ads, Ego gives you the choice. Because in the end, your data belongs to you and it's your choice as to how it's used. Ego is here to provide simple data options to match the complexities of your everyday life. Hello, I'm Zeke, a human-centered designer and strategist with a focus on design ethics. Now, my project Design Ethica is all about bridging the philosophical world of ethics into the practical world of design. Now, the world of design, tech, and innovation has been going through what we call a tech clash, where big tech like Facebook, Amazon, Google, all ended up in a courtroom under the intense scrutiny of lawmakers and the public. The rising cases of these alleged crimes committed in the tech and design industry are pretty alarming. Now, the industry is facing an ethics crisis, or as Kenneth Bowles, the author of Future Ethic, puts it, an ethical awakening is long overdue. Now, my project seeks to address this by introducing ethics into our design process. Design etiquette can be best described in three outputs, the first being an ABC methodology, second being a physical toolkit, and lastly, a community-driven evaluation platform. So the ABC methodology is informed by the three pillars of modern ethics. Alignment is based on virtue ethics. Best practice is based on deontology, which is duty ethics, while consequences is based on consequentialism. Now, I won't bore you here, but you can read more about this on my page. The ABC is also manifested in the second output, which is in the form of a physical toolkit. This toolkit has been tested with designers and design teams and government agencies, such as the Ministry of Justice UK. More importantly, this toolkit is currently being adopted by them to embed ethics into their practice. You can also download this toolkit on my page and learn more about it. Lastly, a community-driven evaluation platform that is also grounded by the ABC methodology is a platform that provides an indicator of how designs are received by different people from all over the world. Designs can upload their designs and get them evaluated via the ABC metric by the community, in turn getting feedback on how their designs are received in different places, contexts, and societies. As I think is highly contextual, this platform hopes to bridge the gap and allow designers and design teams to address, account, and mitigate to help facilitate an ethical outcome. Hi everyone, I'm Daniel, and I'm gonna be introducing our final topic of the day, sustainability. In 2019, the UK Parliament declared a climate emergency. The latest report by the UN's Intermental Governmental Panel on Climate Change states that continued emission of greenhouse gases will cause further warming and long-lasting changes in all components of the climate system. And that while many adaptation and mitigation options can help address climate change, no single option is sufficient by itself. Jyothi, Yaohan, Sita, Chunwei, and myself have all approached the topic from different angles, from mitigation strategies, such as reducing water usage by nudging consumers towards better habits, or exploring innovations in sustainable fashion or agriculture to adaptation strategies, speculating on technologies that will purify our air. We've see, spent our time on the course seeking innovative solutions to the biggest issue that faces humanity today. So with that, let's take a closer look at what we've been doing. Hi, I'm Jyoti. I am an apparel designer turned sustainability expert. Uh, this is my project, Brianna. Brianna is an inclusive humanoid breast form. Brianna simulates real breast shapes and helps design better intimate wear. And I said to my body softly, I want to be your friend. It took a long breath and replied, I've been waiting my whole life for this. Research shows that 70% British women wear bras the wrong size as the recommended measurements do not match the breast volume. Bras are designed, tested and fitted with idealized breasts in mind and there is there's no correlation with real shapes. Most of the women go through sagging and tosses in their lifetime. A survey of more than 100 users showed that women hated wearing bras and they defined their ideal bras to be comfortable and to feel like a snug. It's high time we change the perspective from the viewer to the wearer. Dress forms are used for sample fits in the bra manufacturing process, while aesthetic bodies for marketing and advertising. Increasing cup sizes or band sizes does not necessarily mean inclusive, being inclusive of all breast shapes and sizes. Women make do with a sizing which is fit on a mannequin that has no movement and stays in one shape. I wanted to make a dress form that could reflect real breast shapes by changing their volume and levels of tosses. 
And by considering these variables, Brianna offers brands an opportunity to prioritize wearer comfort and move towards more sustainable practices. Brianna creates a long-term impact of improving intimate wear for women with better fit and size solutions by addressing body dysmorphia and inclusivity of diverse body shapes. Better fitting bras also defy fast fashion with longer use and reduced overconsumption. This project was a semi-finalist at the Mayor's Entrepreneur 2021, and I further plan on receiving a market validation and working on some more iterations, looking at sophisticated robotics technologies and smart materials to achieve a high level of accuracy in breast curvatures. For more information, please reach out to me and I'm happy to connect. Thank you. Hi, I'm Daniel, a designer and engineer from Southwest London. For RCA 2021, I'm presenting a breadth of projects showcasing the variety of roles that I've taken on in the last two years. My major project, agriculture, is an exploration into the future of food. Cellular agriculture, or lab-grown meat, is often presented as the solution to unsustainable emissions produced through agriculture and the meat industry. But as humans, our relationship with meat is complicated, and consumer perception of lab-grown meat is not positive. A 2013 YouGov survey found that only 19% of the UK population probably would try lab-grown meat. For most, it's an unnatural and unappealing food. Agriculture seeks to reframe lab-grown meat and provide alternatives to the high-tech, meat-in-a-petri-dish imagery so prevalent in the media and speculative designs. Developed in collaboration with Selele agriculture startup Hoxton Farms, agriculture proposes that chickens are used as a form of bioreactor. Transformation factors are added to normal, unfertilized chicken eggs to induce pluripotent stem cells and growth factors to direct the cells to form edible portions of meat. Akin to hatching eggs, agriculture eggs are purchased by household chicken owners and placed under a brooding hen for three weeks. Following this, they can be broken open, revealing a portion of meat that is ready to be consumed. By extending the culture of homegrown food, agriculture seeks to guide consumers to more sustainable purchasing decisions, and by providing an experience, agriculture eggs have less of a need to compete through cost with animal-grown alternatives. Hello, my name is Chen Wei. I'm an interdisciplinary designer with architecture and spatial design background. Some of my personal interests are spatial communication and multi-sensory experience through design methodologies and cultural observations to create social impacts, future scenarios, and business strategies. My project is AirCo. AirCo is a new air purification system to improve air quality on the London on the ground platforms while creating a better transportation experience. Research has shown that the platform PM2.5 level is up to 50 times higher than WHO guidelines, and about 70% of metro systems around the world exist local air quality standards. So where are these pollutants from? Most of these particles are iron formed through the friction between wheels and tracks. When train arrive, contaminated air is pushed from the tunnel into the platform because of piston effect. Air cool diverts the piston wind and reduces metallic particles via electromagnetic technology. The first part of the air cool is an airflow diverter installed in the ceiling, which will direct the airflow to the bottom of the platform. The second part is the air purifier installed near the track to fill out the metallic particles. Each can also show real-time air quality level through lighting signal. Passenger can follow the signals to wait at an area with lower pollution. It also improves passenger flow. Please check out our online show and get in touch if you'd like to have a chat. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Yao Han. My project Aegis is a smart test tile integrated negative ion technology for repelling pollutants and air purification. It can help reduce harmful particles 
that adhere to the surface and to provide a new way of air purification and protect people from invisible danger. As we all know, there are many harmful pollutants in people's surroundings. At present, no products cannot really always protect us. And many fine pollutants and virus in the air around people are also very easy to adhere to people's skin, clothes, and hair. We found human beings are the transmission tools of air pollution, spreading pollutants everywhere and bring them back home, which endangers the health of their families, especially vulnerable groups. So we have a concept is to create a textile that can release negative ions to clean and repel harmful pollutants, not only for tobacco smoke, but also for air pollutants like pollen, virus, PM 2.5 and so on. We also have a bigger vision is to apply this fabric to a broader range of fields, such as domestic, poor working conditions, public places, and urban environment. We chose negative iron technologies because it can release millions of negative ions to observe, repel 99% of the pollutants and kill 85% of the bacteria in the air. So introducing Aegis, its power supply can generate millions of negative ions, which can be transmitted through conductive threads and released into the air from the end of the carbon fiber. And these negative ions will become a shield that can repel and eliminate air pollutants to protect you from all these invisible dangers. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Sita Raman, a technology-focused designer and engineer from India. And I'm here to tell you about my thesis project for GID, Boond, redefining our relationship with water one drop at a time. Why water, you may ask? Well, fresh water is a limited natural resource. And many countries around the world are already facing acute water shortages. This situation is only projected to get worse in the coming decades due to increased daily water consumption and climate change. Boond is a platform for hotel guests to help them track and reduce their daily water footprint when they are traveling. The platform can be broken down into three main components, appeal, measurement, and feedback. The appeal is where guests are asked to save water by opting into the Boond platform. They are provided with three choices when they check in, water champion, nature lover, and leisure seeker. These three profiles help the user set limits on activities such as showering and washroom tap usage, which are then transferred to the device in the bathroom. The device takes audio input from the onboard microphone, which is locally processed using machine learning algorithms to detect for water flow events. This helps the device record the time for which water was flowing, which is then tallied against the limits that the user has set for themselves. This is then used to provide visual feedback to the user based on the traffic light system, the device glows green when the user is within their limits, amber when the user is nearing their limits, and red when the user has exceeded the limits that they have set for themselves. This therefore helps the hotel guest monitor and track their daily water footprint and help them reduce their daily water consumption for the duration of their stay. If you are interested to learn more about this project and my other works, Find more on the RCSO 2021 website and do get in touch. Thank you, Sita. Great stuff. I'm sure you look great. Fantastic to see all those projects and thank you all for presenting. Um, in case those of you who, uh, who joined, missed, joined a little bit late and missed the beginning, in case you're wondering, uh, we, that we are joined today by all of those students presenting that work. So yeah, we're all here live. And I want to say that uh, in a few minutes, we're going to be heading over to our virtual gallery space, which is on the Gather platform, which you haven't used it. Um, it's, it's a really fun platform where you can, uh, you can move around the space and, and bump into people and start up video chats with, with groups and with individuals. And you can uh, ask your questions and hear more about uh, the work from directly from the students themselves. Hey, thanks, um, especially, uh, thanks for inviting me guys, because this was your event and I'm, I'm really pleased to be involved today. 
Um, it's been an absolute delight to see your work presented so well. And um, thanks to Patricia for joining us on Saturday to help us get through this. And for Lawrence and Yulia and Charlotte for all of their uh, immense hard work on, in, in the background. As um, but I, I do want to add, uh, before we move over to the other platform, um, we're going to put some links in the chat shortly to, to head on over to the gather. But before we do, I just want to also mention that we've got another one, another event coming up, another Zoom event on Wednesday. It's in the evening London time. It's um, so this Wednesday, 30th of June, it's at 6 p.m. British summertime. And that's titled Chaos as a Catalyst. That will be chaired by Dr. Leila Sheldrick, who's my, our colleague, my colleague, head of GID at Imperial College. And uh, she will be chairing the discussion among the students who will be sharing their experiences of uh, learning and working remotely across multiple time zones and uh, staying creative despite the uh, unexpected challenges and, and new environments that uh, the last year or so have thrown at us. We're also excited to say that we've got a couple of physical exhibitions where we'll be displaying some of the work we've seen today and more. And uh, that will be in Kensington in London, both at Imperial College, that's on the 9th to the 11th of July, and then the following weekend at the RCA itself, just up the road in Kensington Gore, 16th to 18th of July. So uh, do check out our channels if you can be in London then and you want to drop by and say hi and see the work again and, and maybe meet the students face to face. So uh, let me just... Uh, Let's see that, that I think that's uh, where we will call it to a close. Thank you all for joining. Um, those, again, those of you who missed the beginning, we are heading over to the gather space. The link is in the chat. If you click on that link, it will take you to, uh, yeah, best to do it in a desktop or laptop browser rather than on the phone. And uh, you can explore the, the uh, uh, virtual environment and you can, as I said, bump around, bump into people and see what's going on and start some informal conversations. We're all going to head over there now. Um, so uh, if you want to do that now and, and duck out of the call, we will say, see you on the other side. And then we get a sense of who's still here. If they're having difficulties, we can help people get through it. I gather that it works better in Chrome. Um, so if you've got Chrome browser, um, and it's easy for you to do it, then, then uh, open it in Chrome. Is, apparently it works a little bit better. Uh, I'm using Safari, it seems okay. Uh, so let's all head over to Gather Town and just say thanks one more time to all the guys presenting today. And we'll see you on the other side. Thanks very much for me. See you there. Thank mm -hmm. you.